If you are here for the Discover class, that's going to be over in Jamie's office. So if you're here for the Discover class, go to Jamie's office. All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jim, and I'm Mackie, and I'm not going to be talking about Open World Life today, okay? So, those of you that just turn me off, you know, we could probably look over and over again. Which That's all I do. We're going to uh, talk about righteousness, all right? Jamie asked me to, to talk, and it's going to be very interactive. I like the way the classes have gone recently, and that... Uh, you guys get to open your Bibles. Uh, we can share, a little, share, share some scriptures and share some things together. You know, we've been going through this uh, immovable uh, series. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 57 through 58, it says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And I think this talks about righteousness, because it takes righteousness to stand firm in our daily walk with God. It takes that righteousness to make those daily decisions to do what is right and to be pleasing to God in the things that we do. Second so question for you. Why should you want to be righteous? Why would you want to be righteous? To please God. To please God. Anything else? Yeah. Well, Without righteousness, we're not going to see God. Okay. But it's when, the, when we're working on being close to God, we start recognizing that righteousness is a part of that relationship. And if we don't want to be righteous, then there's something that's askew with our relationship with God. Right. Kind of like you don't want to be faithful. You want to be married, but you don't want to be faithful to your wife. Yeah. That doesn't make sense, right? That's okay. right. All right, Bill. Um, for me, it's I'm able to live with myself. When I know I'm not righteous, I just beat myself up. And it, I mean, I, I, I feel the guilt, not not in a bad way, but I think in a good way, where I'm like, I know I haven't done what I'm supposed to do, and I want to be able to respect myself. That's right. Okay. Because we need to keep a clear conscience yeah. in everything that we do. And uh, yet that righteousness is not self-produced. It comes from God. We'll look at that a little bit more this morning. You know, Paul is speaking to the Romans in uh, chapter 3, verse 10. What did he say? Very familiar. There is no, no, no one right. who is righteous, not even one, because we've all sinned. And you know, so we say, well, why, how can I then be righteous? Why even try? Everybody sins. Everybody's imperfect. Um, you know, when is, it the hardest to be, when is it the hardest to be righteous? Was it hard to be righteous on the highway this morning? <laughs> you know, it is for me sometimes. I had, I had my good conscience yeah. Debbie next to me this morning. Mm -hmm. But there are times when I'm alone to be righteous when somebody, I look up in my mirror and there's a little red sports car. I can't even see the front of his bumper because he's tailgating me and zipping around and that. And I wasn't going 30 miles an hour in the left-hand lane, okay? <laughs> but he was just, you know, it's just, oh, it infuriates me, you know? But I have to be righteous. What are some other times you uh, are challenged to be righteous? Yes. When I'm tired. When you're tired. Very, very good. Yeah. On your job, when you got so many personalities. You're around all them unrighteous people all day long. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're so self-righteous. Yeah. You know? That's so, right. You know, That's right. Yeah. When someone hurts my children. Someone hurts my children. You want to talk about a mama bear? <laughs> you know, an angry mama bear. Don't mess with her kids. Our kids. You know. Alright, thank you. But things don't go my way. Things don't go your yeah. way. Alright. But they're always supposed to go our way, right? You're right. Okay. So, you know, it's hard to be righteous when people talk about politics, you know, because we've got our own opinion, just like we all have our own nose, you know. And uh, when we're tempted by those alluring things in life, be it sexual, be it uh, financial, be it uh, lustful things, be it things that uh, we wish we had, we want to envy, covet, you know, we're greedy for those things. It's hard to be righteous at times. It's hard to be righteous when my gators lose. You know? <laughs> but I have a firm grasp of reality right now. Now, Elliot, on the other hand, he's got to be righteous because his Seminoles are winning and playing great. You know? so it, works, it works both ways at all times of life. And that. So, where does this righteousness we have come from? What's the, what's the source of it? Obviously, it's God. Where does right. it come from? Faith. 
comes through faith. That's right. We'll look at that in just a minute. And uh, you know, you get into Romans three and four, you get a, we get a lot of study about uh, righteousness and faith, where it comes from. We've talked about Abraham uh, in the, in the uh, steadfast, immovable classes, and that. And so, you know, Abraham was a great example of that righteousness, of doing what God would want him to do and being faithful in that. So there's a, there's a very, very deep study uh, about our own, um, about what, what righteousness is, what faith is, where it comes from, and how we demonstrate that uh, in our daily lives. So we want to talk today about more of our personal righteousness, about us being righteous before God, us, us doing what we need to be doing in our lives. But before we do that, I want to show a quick video. So the sound guys are back there. I want to show you a video. You've all heard of the most interesting man in the world. Well, this is the most righteous man in the world. <laughs> Okay? 